watching at home, this is Adelaide Eternal. You're with Sav McClinton and Beckett Wolf. Get it, guys. We're bringing you our vintage challenge, and this time we have Ed Watts on the right of the camera, and he is on a Leovold deck, and we have me on the left of the camera. So, uh, and I'm on Grixis Thieves. <laughs> so, guys, we have one of our Hall of Heroes, but not just one. Our very top tier, the hero, the legend, the man himself, with two vintage wins, three legacy wins, one Highlander win, and far and above, 18 top eight finishes, which is, we've only done 19 matches, so it's 18 of 19. 19 challenges. 19 <laughs> challenges, and he's gotten top eight in all 18. It's yours truly, Southern Clinton. Thank you. I, that's a that's a stunning intro. I don't know. I guess I'll go to my deck tech then. Um, so I am on Grixis Leaves, and this is a deck that uh, you may have seen before. It's basically revolving around the two greatest thieves in the multiverse, or well, one of the greatest thief, Dak Faden, and the interaction with Notion Thief, another marginally marginal thief in the he's multiverse. A, he's a thief. He, he's, he's under Dak Faden's wing. Yes. He's yeah. learning the ropes. That's, that's right. They work well together as a team in some kind of buddy cop style movie. Yeah, the junior and the... They play good cop, bad cop. <laughs> so uh, if that's the key engine in the deck, but the rest is just a good control deck. And if you, uh, if you can't win by a grinding them out with value, then you can win by a fast tinker into Blightsteel Colossus, which you can do against shops. Easy by, you know, VT on turn one and then uh, turn two tinker. And the same thing can go with the vault key combo, which is, you know, normally not that great against control, but it's really good against, you know, shops and so on if you can just assemble the pieces straight away because they're very cheap to combo out and win. Um, tinker, tinkering bot is probably the best one to go for. Anyway, the, uh, the unique aspects of the deck are a bunch of little things that I changed basically the week before thinking about what I might encounter. Classic. Yeah, typical me. Uh, I added Spell Snare into the deck because basically I was worried about a lot of shops and I was also worried about a lot of Oath. I'm used to playing Mentor and having White for Containment Priest in the sideboard, but not having that uh, made my, um, my Oath match up worse. So I want to play Spell Snare. Um, the other unique addition in the deck is I'm running an additional one Wasteland in the main deck and one Wasteland in the sideboard. And the reason being uh, against shops, it's really good. And oh, pretty good. Not, I always say really good, but pretty good. And then against Dredge, it's really good. And you can sometimes just blow out control players by strip, strip and wasting their Library of Alexandria. So having that additional one in the sideboard was really good. Those are the main main little changes in my deck. The rest is pretty much Griffith's Leaves. Yes, and moving on to Ed Watt's list is the coolest four-colour. Uh, I'm going to say four-colour control um, with two Leovold Emissary of Trist, who's big boy in vintage these days. Seeing a lot of play. Uh, I think he's really, really good. I've lost uh, many games to him, but I haven't played him. He's got uh, three deck fade and two Jace as other wing cons all hanging around that three four mana um area he's got two mana drains and i like mana drain with the jace but i'm wondering if that's a bit tough with the levels because you can't actually power the leave because it gives you colorless mana the thing that caught my eye was also knight's whisper which i've not seen a vintage before but yeah. Sav's telling me it's, it's legit a it's a thing now uh it it kind of came in off the leovold decks that were you know bug colored and they, you know, they just were trying to grind out with Deathrite Shaman, then Leovold turn two. And if you didn't have a Deathrite Shaman on turn one, then you could play a Night's Whisper, or you could play Mox and land a Night's Whisper turn one. Sometimes you just wanted to be able to have a, a thing that fit the two drop curve. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be keen to see it. Let's check it out again. Sweet. Okay, so we're drawing our hands now. I know the result of the match, so I'll keep some of that. A secret but we you're in you're in for an interesting match that's for sure uh, a lot of things that don't normally happen happen in this <laughs> you put it spoiled it now oh no spoiler alert <laughs> okay so we're deciding on how to roll this dice and i think it's an odds or evens call so that's a uh 
four, which is me. <laughs> so I guess I called evens or or Ed called odds. <laughs> Ed called odds? Odds? Evens? No, I can't, I can't remember. Um, anyway, so drawing hands here. You will note that as, uh, you know, per people Ooh. who commentate, I like to that's show a, my hand in great detail to the it's audience. A, it's a nice hand, it's, it's a nice reveal, and it's a nice artwork on that soul ring. That is sweet artwork. Yeah, three oh, this hand, This hand lines up really good against me, though. He's got double mental misstep, and I've got soul ring voltaic key. And he's got the force backup. Yeah, and he's got force backup. So, yeah, obviously my line here is soul ring, and against any control player, I basically always misstep a soul ring on turn and one. And what's so happening doing step? Correct, correct decision there. So we both go to 18, therefore it's a draw. And he's got another misstep in hand. Yeah. Uh, I would 100% misstep this again. Because yeah, we're interested. He instinctively misstepped it originally. Yeah, so. I think that's totally correct. Yeah. But I think if I fight over this, you fight over it if you've got a second mental misstep. Because if I untap turn two Jace... It's scary. Yeah, I mean, so no, I don't have to tell you know any EDH player how good soaring is, and uh, yeah. that's what missteps in the deck for. So, so I just run out the time bolt here, and you know that's that's usually a situation you should be scared of as a control uh, opponent, because yeah, when they run it out and they don't keep it protected in their hand, it's uh, it means you got you got to so do something. He's pitched his second misstep, which uh, I wouldn't do. <laughs> well, the the reason being because he's only scared of Time Vault if you've got Voltaic Key, and Voltaic Key, funnily enough, is a one-drop. Yes, so that's why I'd keep the mental misstep. But personally, I would have just used that second misstep on the Sol Ring because it's a really good denial. You get the same yeah. situation. One mana mean. destroys two... Uh, one one card destroys two mana, basically. Um, and then you end up in the same situation. But yeah, he definitely had a second out there, which was keeping the misstep, pitching the this probe to the Force of Will, and then he keeps it for yeah. Voltaic. And now he just, and sees, he just sees my Voltaic. Key. Instead, of, instead of being able to counter the key, he sees you win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I just showed it to him, and I'm like, well, I had to keep the seven. <laughs> like, I was like, this 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 hand was gas, so you know, like, I'm just hoping. And I said, I, I just hope that you don't run like main deck a braid or something. Yeah, mind you, it's pretty tough to uh, counter through all of that. And yeah. uh, imagine, imagine if I get a braided here, though. Like, I'm so blown out. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, massively blown out, and he still has ponder in hand. But he's got Ancestral Recall. Like, his hand is so good. Yeah, <laughs> Ancestral really Recall. Good. And I'm just like, yep, please don't have don't have uh, a Braid and uh, Second Minor. So, yeah, he's... It's... It'd be a stretch to have that level of counter spells and have the uh, Mox Mox land a Braid, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, I keep a proactive hand and uh, uh, so here I, like, draw land and... You know, I just play it out just because I'm like, I don't know what you have, so I may as well just play it out. I'm not going to bluff. Feel or something. <laughs> yeah, like, you have something to counter this. And so um, he's, he's reading it for posterity. We were just chuckling over it, and, and you know, he's, he's like, uh, he knows what it does. He's just, like, checking to see if there's any way that he can interact with this in any way, shape, or form. Um, and here I'm still worried about a, an artifact destruction, but no one plays Smelt main deck. No. <laughs> so... I believe that I told him I would simply cycle through my deck until it is pertinent for me to discard cards and we will assume that I take additional turns until I show you a win con. Once I name the win con, are we okay to go to the next game? And he was like, yes. And I said, I'll play Jace. And I said, I will plus him <laughs> because yeah. I was playing around Lightning Bolt. I, I, I didn't say brainstorm. <laughs> well, you wouldn't brainstorm anyway, right? You don't need to. Don't need to. But like, you know, you know how it's a default position. You just brainstorm yeah. straight away. So I was, I was like, well, I'm not just gonna, you know, lose. I'll just play this guy, and I will brainstorm. I will uh, fate seal so that you can't bolt it. And I believe that after the game, he said, yeah, I had bolt in hand. Yeah. So, you know, like what would happen there is sure it doesn't seem negligible. It doesn't seem relevant, but in reality, it's in more information. Every blue deck plays Jason Mind Sculptor. So all I want to do is show him Mind Sculptor and say I'm going to ultimate him. But well, um, you misplayed there. You should have bottomed the deck. <laughs> and then you get to fate till every turn, and you get to see more information from yep. him. Yeah, I I, I realised that afterwards. I yeah, was like, I just I want had, to do this quickly, but then the, I'm like, the that's last, why I'm like, the exact same I'll thing do this again. To me. Last time I did, I was like, keep it on top; it doesn't matter. And I'm like, oh, hang on, I get more information. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> my opponent quickly skipped after that. Yeah, yeah, I I I can't remember. I'm just like, I'm just gonna do this as quickly as possible. And um, he's like, yep, yep. And I'm like, I'll look at it again. I'll look at the same card again. <laughs> and then 
Uh, yeah. Put him what? Well, put put Jace up to twenty nine, and then just ult him twice. Right? Oh yeah, that's that's correct. It goes to the point of uh, in time in which I don't want to discard cards to give him information. So I I just say I'll do this, and then I said I'll I'll go above lightning bolt range. <laughs> I said I'll go up again, <laughs> and then I will go down, <laughs> and I'll ultimate targeting you. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was like it's totally. Correct to make me play it out. Because I think that early starts. in game one, like you know, game two, it's starting to drag on a little bit, and times an issue. But game one, when you literally like don't know the information, yeah. is very relevant. Yeah, I didn't want to go to discard, so I'm like, I'm gonna have to make sure I do this when I'm on seven cards. Uh, and he was, and and the thing is, it is a clever clever bluff because he he told me after the match, he's like, yes, I had lightning bolt in hand, but I was like, mm, this is clever because you're playing in a way that you have lightning bolt. And now I assume that he has a lightning bolt, so I play the game differently. Mm. So I think it's uh, he he was doing the mind games, the, the sub magic sub games, <laughs> which which he engaged in there. And um, I I think it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly correct. I'm going to sideboards here, sub. What what are you thinking? Uh, you'll see my exact cards I bring in and exact cards I bring out. Well, then we don't need to talk about that. What's it bringing but in for Ed? Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, whenever you are playing a deck with Pyroblast, obviously Pyroblast comes straight in. And he's already got two Pyroblasts in the main, and he has an additional Pyroblast in the side. Wow, and so. I'm also seeing two Ancient Grudge, two Abrade, one Abrupt Decay. Uh, that seems pretty good against you. Yeah. Well, I'm actually very happy if he brings in Ancient Grudges, because sure, they kill... he only actually saw Voltaic Key. It's true. And in reality, the rest of my deck doesn't... I don't have Paradoxical Outcome, I don't have any of these you know, crazy artifact synergies. You know, I don't have like a seat of the sign on for him to kill or like, you don't have any of that. It's just Voltaic Key Time Bolt. And I was si sitting there thinking, you know, do I even side these out so that he brings in ancient yeah. stuff, ancient grudge and stuff? And I'm like, no, I don't because it's an amazing wing card. <laughs> but I thought about it, you know, it was relevant. I actually I thought about it. I'd, I'd probably bring in uh, two braids. Yeah, I wanted to bring in... Blast and maybe a spell bomb against you. Just imagine if he brought in double ancient grudge, double mm. double a braid, and I took out time bolt or take you. You know, like it would be pretty, <laughs> pretty nasty because all he's doing is hitting mana. And sure, they're really great stone rain effects, but that's stone rain isn't where you want to be when stone rain's I not use good it to cast. Yeah, like you use it to cast a Jason Mind Sculptor, then they stone rain your land. It's not good. Um, but you know, you can definitely do it when you have no other choice. Uh, he's also got a, a cool card. Yeah, I agree with you on uh, Nihil Spellbomb. That's really, really good in control mirrors uh, because you games go long and they dirtily. This, this match showed me as a combo deck, but I believe he knew that I was a control deck. Mm. So, um, And the other thing is, I'm not saying you bring it in here, but one thing that's popped up in sideboards recently a lot is subterranean tremors. And I've had discussions with people about this, and it is, uh, it's a hedge against the mentor decks. Because usually you can subterranean tremors, X is two and it wipes the board, or X is three, or X is one, even if they've got a young pyromancer and, and tokens instead. And uh, it's also decent against shops because you can X is one and kill a bunch of uh, Phyrexian revokers and you know, Ballistae and stuff. Well, here's my sideboard. So I take out Vamp, Tinker, Bot, and one basic land, and I bring in double pyro, wasteland, and uh, Ingot Sure. Mm. Yeah, because I assume um, Ingot Sure is just better. Than the other cards. The other cards are card disadvantage, and I also don't want to clog up my deck with lands because the additional basic island in the main deck is there because you're when you're facing down uh, creature, creature aggro decks like shops and you know Thalia decks and stuff. So you just don't want to flood out. And sometimes you cast Ingot Chore for five. <laughs> what was that? Uh, that was me saying how people show their hands to oh, the yeah. camera. <laughs> I wasn't giving him a, a rude hand yeah, gesture. Yeah, that was a bit off there, so. Um, yeah, we, we were chatting about how, you know, showing sideboards to the camera is really good because it's useful discussion, but people show their hands somewhere. Yeah, they give us their wrists. Yeah, they show their wrist watching. And, and their lovely wrists. Yeah, yeah but, that's right. But, I, you know, I can come around to your house and look at your wrist any time. Well, not any time. If you just invite me over. If I'm sleeping, it'll be creepy. 
So Well, if only you'd invite me over, then I could look at your wrists, audience. <laughs> Comment below if you'd like to have me around. I'll just send a, send a photo of your wrists in, guys, uh, and then you won't have to show us on camera. Will you Thanks, Edward. <laughs> Ed, Thank did you. Ed do he exactly what I was saying? That. He literally did. No, I think he corrected it. He, I think, he must have been doing it ironically. It, okay. I, I think I was, I was telling him how um, if you draw line of sight from the camera to the iPad, don't go higher. Like, I, I think I said that to everyone. <laughs> It doesn't make a difference. Yeah, it, doesn't, it? it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> We're not bitter or anything, are we? No. Nah. <laughs> Already. So early in our commentating careers and we're bitter. Yeah, we're about, jaded. <laughs> so jaded about hand, hand, um, hands being shown on camera. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, Ed Mulligan here. So he's going, Did he did Mulligan. Hey. No, he, that was his sideboard, sorry. Oh. Yeah, he showed us Pithing Needle and some other sideboard tech. Yes, yes. Because he didn't like, have many lanes. In- no, yeah. I'm like, oh, he's mulliganing that hand of six sideboard. Go- oh, wait, that's his sideboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes sense now. Um, but yeah, it looks like he brought in brought in some uh, hate for the artifacts, which is probably what I want. I want his deck to be diluted and because I'm not going to ha- have a hand like that again. Mm. And... If I did, I wouldn't jam it because I know I know he's going to have heaps of these artifact removal spells. Now, when your when your control player plays out the time bot, that's scary. But when they leave it in hand and you never know when they're just going to go vault key, yeah, that's scary. That's really truly scary that you just they've got cards in hand. You're like, Michael, just lose. Uh, it's the sleeve mirror as well. We're both on the same sleeves. Yeah, apparently. don't don't get those decks mixed up. No, no, not at all. One of them costs a lot more than the other. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, two additional moxen. <laughs> um, so let's have a look at this hand. So uh, it's a pyroblast immediately in Ed's hand. Pyroblast, mana drain, brainstorm, mental misstep. It's uh, quite two, a controlling hand. Uh, library of Alexandria. It's not. Mine's brainstorm, mental misstep, Yorgos, will, Jason, mine's got three land. Mm, well. Yeah, he's got force of will as well, but he's got library of Alexandria. Did he? I didn't did see he? library. Okay. If he had library, I'd be like an Ed. There oh, he does. Yep. Yep. So he's on the play, and uh, you know, there's 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 reasons to play it out, i.e., against shops where you just play the library and pass. Um, but there's also reason because you want to be able to get around thorns to the next turn. If it doesn't get wastelanded, you get to play a, play a thing through a thorn. But if you don't have um, if, if you're playing against a control player, sometimes you just keep it in hand, pass the turn, to play nothing. They go, oh, no, you've got library. You go to your turn, you draw a card, play library, draw a card. Yeah. So, but, I, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, it's... Against non-shops, I like, to play the, I like to play the library out. Yeah. Personal preference. But also, you don't know whether your opponent is on wastelands and stuff, so... Um, but anyway, the... I'm incentivized to do things because he has library. So I'm going to main phase... Turn one without a fetch sure, land no. brainstorm. I know it's it feels so bad. I have a fetch land in hand, but basically I want to go. I need to find wasteland, and I'm not going to. And, and I need to um, use my mana. What do you call it? Efficiently, which normally you don't. Like normally you want to hold brainstorm as long as possible, right? I'm a major advocate for not brainstorming. Um, but I guess your I'm hand, a, is, any hand, is bad when life yeah, is out, right? Exactly. Now, what if I? Because if I brainstorm the following turn and i found preordain but not strip mine mm. then i wouldn't be able to deploy it so if i brainstorm here shuffle away one card and if i break my brainstorm out of preordain i can preordain to try and find the wasteland for that drop that's the reason why i play that there so he's already got his advantage of library yep we were having this discussion and uh but it's not out of control yet yeah it's it's extremely strong and i'm so behind but look, look at that Bunch of bunch of counter spells. You can't counter strip mine though. True. I know nothing I do here. Um, he's going to actually counter right because he needs to stay in the library. Like I can, I can. If I do one drops, he's going to preordain. Uh, I don't find a wasteland here, so now I'm just all in on the. I got to cast Jace this game plan, right? Yeah, Jace okay, uh, and Trump's library, although they keep each other at bay quite a bit. Yeah. It never and feels as bad, you know, when your opponent has a Jace out if you've got an active library. Yeah. Yep. And so here's my preordain. And so this is where you can, like, mental misstep that because... And so I found DT uh, and a land. So obviously it's going to be land on bottom, DT on top, draw DT. 
Um, but uh, Ed's Ed's hand is full of counters, and I thought was there a mental misstep in his counters? Uh, I'm not quite sure, but the problem is where if you can pressure the library player early, they can't force because they'll lose their library. But at this stage, Ed can just draw to seven or draw to eight, um, play a land down to seven. So not tap library here. Yep. Draw draw naturally, play land, pass turn, and then in when you go to cast a spell servant, yep. he taps library, draws to eight, forces down to six, yep. and, and then natural seven, draws to seven again. Yep, totally. And that way he can force and f- keep on library, whereas this way he can't. Mm. So I think the correct thing to do is actually to... And now if you have misstep here, now he's uh, kaputz, because if you have misstep and then you go DT... Strip. Yeah, he he's not going to be able to interact. Yep. So, yeah, casting a brainstorm here forces action. That's it. And this is where the pyroblasts come and in. And see, Ed, Ed's logic here is, oh, well, um, I don't lose card advantage of brainstorm because brainstorm yep. tr- cycles itself. But that doesn't work if Sav interacts with Misstep or, in this case, Pyroblast. Because now, you know, does it, Sav doesn't really care about the brainstorm all that much. It's more that Ed's off library. So I just wanted to fight a counter war over it, and uh, uh, I believe he's on six cards now. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's on exactly six, which means that uh, he ca- he either gets to choose to counter something or go to his turn and draw a card with library for the rest of the game. Yeah. So it's a very hard choice. Like I need to present something that is convincing enough for him to counter it. Yeah. And he's gonna go. Whatever it is, can I draw out of it? And most of the time you can. Yeah, that's right. It's only things like Monastery Mentor, which I don't have, obviously. But Yeah, I, look, I totally agree. Monastery Mentor or a really fast clock like that is legit. But even a Jace there, I don't want to even force over that because then if you have the backup force, I've just lost. Yeah. So I want to go like, okay, Jace is better than the library, but it's not that much better than the library. Yeah, like you need to stay in the library. Yeah. Like for Jace to be less scary, you need to stay in the library. DT here. Yeah. So there's a DT. And so obviously when you're on the receiving end of a DT, you you weigh up all the options of what to do. And he's going, well, I'm going to see what you get and then I'm going to Force counter that if get. it's scary. But if it's not scary, I get to stay in the library. So that's that's um, basically his logic. Uh, but it's going to be his downfall. I think he's, he's off library the way he's thing. Right. Yeah, but he doesn't know they have Wasteland yeah. decks there. Um, but I mean, he could have just passed turn and kept up Mana Drain, right? And stayed in the library forever. Uh, yes. He had Mana Drain in hand with Force Backup. Yeah, so the, uh, but that, that's why I fought the war over the, um, yeah. the Brainstorm. No, that's what I mean, though. Instead of Brainstorming, yeah. if he just passes turn and then Mana Drain's whatever you do and you fight over it and he says, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, it. it, it Picking counter wars is always important in vintage, yeah. and um, and uh, Ed Ed played something where he's like, "There's no way you counter this," and I'm like, "There's yes way I counter this." Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's a bit of yeah vintage bluff. experience. And Ed, bluff Ed's a fantastic well. player. In truth, I've played against him in modern and uh, gotten absolutely crushed. Yeah, he's on a, a regular basis. Player. He's a very tight player, but he doesn't play much vintage. Yeah. So um, I, yeah. Library's just about staying in the library, isn't it? Yeah. And Speaking of library, here, uh, I feel like we've said library too many times this, yeah. this match. Well, you know... Um, been there, a couple of libraries. The, there has been. The, the interesting part here is that uh, when your opponent leads on library, it feels like they're so far ahead. And the key is to get them out of the... like The key is for you to make sure that they don't validate their library card. And the key here and is... Then later on, you rip their library card up and yeah. say, there's no chance you're ever going to borrow books again. Trip, and in trip. fact, I'm going to stick your library card together and I'm going to go and pretend to be you that in is the library boat and full borrow of books stuff. is what that is. That's right. that is and a boat fill, full of books. fill my local um, yacht yes. with all these books... And so it's just got Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's got wi- all the access. It's all digital now. <laughs> so. Things change here, though. Uh, so my hand is Yorg, Will, two lands, and Jace. And I'm going to hold off playing Yorg, Will for as long as possible because I know that he's got a whole bunch of counters, right? If he's been he's sitting in the library and not doing I mean, you anything, get to just jam. Of... You get to just jam Jace next yeah. turn, right? Just something. That's it. Like, I just jam. And he's probably got not much 
if uh, Cruz is resolving, right? Yeah, there's uh, there's a reason why you know this is a bluff, is because if I really wanted to draw three cards off Cruz, I wouldn't play Library, would I? Mm. I'm playing library and saying I'm going to draw with Cruz, and he's like, I better counter that li- that Cruz. That's all right. And my reality is I'm going to go to my next turn and play Jason my Sculptor. So like, it's one of these counter counter war bluff things where I'm like, how many levels of bluffing can I do? And I'm going, oh, I played library because I want to play around spell peers. I think and flusterstorm. But in reality, I'm going. I want you to counter this. <laughs> I think I just want to point out the mana drain there. How like oh, yeah. cluster it was. Yeah. I mean, you know. I've run Manager and Vintage, and I think it's still fine to run one, but I personally don't like it. And, you know, people see Manager as this total blowout card, but the truth is, most of the time, it doesn't, yeah. it's not, it's known better than a Counterspell. And there's nothing wrong with Counterspell. Counterspell's yeah. fine. It's, it's not good, good enough for Vintage. It's, it's a broken. decent card. Yeah. But it's not that much better than Counterspell. I mean, that is the best Manager you could ever hope for. It countered a huge spell that drew three cards. He didn't uncount my Jace. It doesn't have any mana. You know, he doesn't well, he doesn't have enough mana. He really wants extra mana, but he got eight extra mana for that cruise uh drain mana. He didn't do anything. Yeah. He when it lines up cast when it lines up it's amazing. So here's another one of my bluffs, all right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, why not? I'm like, I still got Jason Mine's got the Yorg Will in hand. Yeah. And I'm like, Well, you probably have Pyroblast, so I'll play the worst Jace. <laughs> yeah, now you get to go land Oh, you don't even play land. I don't even play land. I, was I just say, want to bluff that I was gonna I've say, got you action. Can, you can play land and then Jace next turn and then land York Moss mini jace if that doesn't resolve yes you just got gas for days true. oh massive gas massive gas i guess you can do that now anyway <laughs> um, right? yeah so this this is one of these things where i'm like okay i've used up your pyroblast i've used up your mana drain i've used up your mental misstep and you that means you still have force of will in hand <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, well, I'm not incentivized to do anything. I'm just going to draw cards of library when I get there. So this is a Snapcaster Beats because he recognizes the fact that I am building up to library and he has uh, a threat now, which is good. Yeah. So I'm just drawing cards. That's why I didn't play land out because I was just going to draw up to library as a backup plan. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's almost the safer option because Jace gets countered and then you, uh, you're off library, you're off Jace. Yep. But if you st- stick on library... And then you drop Jace, then you've got at least a library backup. Yeah, it can't stop you from being on library. That's it. So yeah, like, I'm I'm on library now. And now you just and need a bit of snap custom mage. Yeah, with exactly. a full grip. Exactly. And this was all because I played library and played treasure cruise, which I was going to do anyway. I was pretty sure treasure cruise wasn't going to resolve, but if it did, I'm into library. And if it doesn't, then I don't play another land and I get into library. Yeah. <laughs> so this is why library is so good in these control mirrors. That's it. And, and look at the pressure it's put um, on Ed. He's been forced to find gas with this treasure cruise, uh, with this snap custom age, instead of just even doing something, you know, like a snappy brainstorm. Yeah. You know, just... And uh, yeah. He's not hitting his land drops, which is definitely relevant. But if my tre- time walk eats a... Pre- uh, Pyroblast, I'm happy. It's not that. Like, yeah. the time walk was a draw one card, draw an additional card. Yeah. Explore. Uh, double explore. It's two explores. That's what it was. The time walk was two explores. Um, but I wasn't hinging on it. But well, that's it. I mean, you have to trade cards when you're drawing an extra card, so it's lose-lose for Ed. Definitely not a misplay to Pyroblast. It, um... No, no. I think it's totally... Like, either way, it's bad for him, but, you know, uh, it's not my best spell. Mm. <laughs> And here I don't go out of library, I just let Dak resolve. I feel like your best spell is just something that uh, um, gets rid of snap, maybe. Probably don't really need to. You yep. probably find a threat but before you are required to beat the snap. Yeah, I've got like five turns. to, And he's got so many counters and, and demonic tutor. Yeah. Like, he's counter glutted, obviously, which isn't a bad thing. But the problem is counters don't deal with library and this is exactly why i run an additional wasteland and additional wasteland in the sideboard because mm. of this kind of a uh, situation but he gets to pitch the superfluous force of will of dak faden and dak faden is a really really big threat yeah and i card. think it's uh right to pitch the force because forces seem really good and you're like oh yeah i love my forces nice backup but are you really ever going to cast three forces and have three blue cards to pitch yep. and not just have nothing else to do agreed yeah. Like you can't pit, you can't cast three forces, pitch three things, and then play gas. Yeah, and although I'm drawing additional card a turn, actually he's seeing more cards a turn than I am, 
and sure you know you'd always want to be in the library <laughs> but it's not he's not that far behind while stack faden is out to be able to yeah. find the right cards to deal with my like find a strip mine or find um you know, find another snap custom mage or find a lightning box snap custom mage. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I like you even got pyro in here. That's a red card. Yes, yeah. So I go main phase pyro blast your snap custom mage, mm. not Dak Faden. Like that's that's the thing because I'm actually say telling him I actually lose in six turns to snap custom mage. Mm. I don't lose in six turns to Dak Faden, do I? I just draw past Dak Faden in terms of value. Um, but Dak Faden's not going to get you, in there. You've got cards to burn, really, so it doesn't matter too much. Yeah. I'm on seven. And uh, I do have forces in hand, but I, I don't want to use the forces, obviously, because it would take me out of library. Does... And this is a dangerous window here for him to be able to cast something relevant. And Knight's Whisper is not irrelevant. In no, but it's certainly not a force will. No, it's definitely not something I'm going to force. Like, if he played land Jace Mind Sculptor here, then I have to. Like, it's just a... It's just a definite <laughs> i have to do that have to counter it um so this is a preordain probably not with a force you reckon <laughs> unlikely <laughs> um i've missed effort yeah like if i'm on seven cards and i go to six and then i go to my turn and go to seven again and draw for, off library then definitely missed it like you definitely want to trade one for one when you're in the library so Ooh. jace and land so what keep the land uh draw the land and keep just hovering on top yeah. Well, I guess it, he just doesn't matter because he's, he's going to attack. He's going to play it next turn anyway, right? Yeah. He's just going to play Jace and the land next turn anyway, so it's totally fine. <clears throat> um, and I, I can't see his hand here, but I assume it's actually quite low now. So um, did he not deck this turn? So that because I thought if he decks, he loses Jace, right? Uh, true, but he might have dead cards. Yeah, I think he has he has like another force of will in hand that he doesn't want. He probably only wants to keep one force of will to protect the Jace. Right. Yeah, correct. So he pitches a force and some something else dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a braid. So now Sweet. we can see how those sideboard cards were invalidated when yeah. when you realise that my deck isn't actually an artifact deck. It's just got bolt key and it's got bot. And I take out bot anyway and bot doesn't get killed by a braid mm -hmm. anyway. So. And there's another drain going to bin and I think that's correct. Because it can't protect the big spell that you want to protect, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very good reactive spell, but it's not a very good protection spell. Yep, agreed. Uh, so I don't draw from library this turn. I just uh, uh, draw my eighth card, play a land, and pass a turn. That's my guess. <laughs> I don't remember this game in that much detail. Yeah, but I mean... I like, looking at past me, I'm like, past me, make the right decision. I feel right? like you could play Jace here safely right maybe i do i can't remember because he's tapped out except for one card yeah and like you've seen him preordain top yeah i think you're right yeah. see past me could have stayed in the library but i guess i'm I like i'll oh, make a win con now well, on. well force here is still not that far away, really. that's right now i remember yeah so he, he, i played jace he forced pitches snapcaster mage and i'm like I just got so much value off yeah. this off your force of will when you've got dak and can't pitch your dak a uh, pitch um uh in not valuable cards anymore now you're going to be dacking and you know being low on cards mm. so i get to um you know try and blow him out here but again it takes me off library but i get to pyroblast the force of will uh, yeah and jace will get you back in library pretty quick yeah. anyway yeah that's the plan uh so although i go with this exchange i go down to f what four cards or five cards um, I can't remember. But yeah, it, you'll note that I didn't actually draw a library card this turn. Mm. Like, I just used it to cast Colorless Mana to Jace. So, like, I, I'm sure that there's a world out there where I'm like, just draw off library. But I think I was like, I'm going to see I don't game. know why, but my instinct was to um, Jace that turn. Mm. Interesting. Like, when I look back at it, I'm like, oh, I'd just stay in the library. But I can see why I did it at the time. Uh, anyway, I fake seal myself because again, like remember the previous game, I just assumed that he had lightning bolt because of the way he played that, and I went up. I went. Oh, well, you've I'm just seen afraid. a braid as well. Although yeah, a braid, a braid only creatures. does creatures. Okay. So yeah, I fake seal here because I'm like, uh, <laughs> you might have lightning bolt, um, but I wonder, did he just decide his lightning bolt was out because <laughs> it would like yeah, it's like, it doesn't have any targets. Lightning bolt does kill Jace. Yeah. But not one. when you know they have lightning bolt. You know? And then it forces you to put them up. 
Yes, true. True. But I guess he doesn't know that. There's so he Jace. gets to he gets to play his own. Which Jace. is scary, but you've yeah. got Jason Library, and he's just got Jason Dak. So, which are they're, they're comparable. So then, yeah, Library versus Dak. I feel yeah. like it's like Dak then Library then Jace, right? Yeah, That's my opinion. agreed. Agreed. I'm like I'm like one point five. <laughs> no, he's he's one point five and one two. Yeah, yeah, cards. Oh, um, so yeah, no, this takes me dramatically off library, but yeah. I'm like, I need to counter this Jace, hundred percent. But he has cards in hand, so I pitch preordained to Force of Will. Yeah, but you've also seen him discard two forces, right? Yeah, Ooh. but here we go. Fifth. So now he's empty-handed, and he ha- resolves his Jace. I have nothing else, but. You remember one card is in my hand from the beginning of the game. We'll come back to it in a second. But here, uh, he gets to resolve his Jace. He gets to brainstorm. Oh, one card and he's got one card in hand. So he goes, brainstorm, makes sure that he has, like, you know, counterspell. Oh, no, he goes fate seal because he's afraid of bolt as well. Gush. <laughs> yeah, Gush is really good with yeah. Jace brainstorm. Gush is quite <laughs> really, good really with good. brainstorm and library. Yeah, and library. Oh, man. Uh-huh. Like, ah. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's right. He said, I put it definitely on the bottom. And I'm like, is it Gush? <laughs> Something like that. Because I'm like, I want Gush. But oh. I draw a <laughs> call. Pretty good one. It's one of the better cards. Um, you just you just ache all here, right? You don't brainstorm first because you want to be able to... No point, no point putting back two bad cards and then just drawing them with ache all anyway. You want to dig a bit deeper. You'd so. think so. But remember that one card oh. in my hand from the beginning of the game? Pretty good. <laughs> so what, you pyroblast here, huh? Yeah, it seems so. You got two pyroblasts in your graveyard, don't you? <laughs> you cheeky boy. <laughs> Remember how I said, like, my opening hand had your will, and in a in a control mirror, you're like, you're going to wait as long as possible in the late game, cast this spell, and just win the game? When you don't cast a call <laughs> yeah. and flashback a yeah. call again, because you, you just go, yeah. do two pyroblasts and they're two planeswalkers off your moss will. It's pretty good. Yeah. And cheeky land drop, and now you can still play your A core, right? Yep. And now I've still got A core, and I've got Brainstorm, and, brainstorm Jace, and, and I've got done. Active Fetch. And now and that's found half a piece. Yeah, the ride, the writing is on the wall. I'm so far ahead that I'm like, you've got one card I don't know in hand, so I'm just going to up the tempo and just yeah, like it finish pretty this much game. has to be Tinker, right? And even Tinker for Tinker's what? sided out. I mean, in his yeah. deck. Oh, in his deck. I'm just yeah, thinking which what you could have. possibly be scared of, but he doesn't run it, and even then, you can unsummon plus. Yeah, what I what I am afraid of is him ha- deploying two two threats or combo wins, like you know, like Leovold, mm. both in the same turn. If he does that, I'm actually afraid. Um, but he know, can't. But he really can't do anything too drastic. Yeah. Like he can go Leovold. But he can't go like um, but if he had a, uh, I think A call was gone, right? He had A call in his opening hand. Um but yeah, yeah, like deploying two threats here is scary, but he I don't think he has two threats. So yeah. And yeah, oh. he draws he draws um Jason Wayne Sculptor, which mm-hmm. is insane. So I f- I crack the fetch to shuffle away these cards. Because then I get to A call. A call, hope to find yeah. force because you're going to A call anyway, I guess. Yeah, I have force in hand. I just need a blue ah. card. And I don't want to pitch A call to it. And if I do draw three non blue cards, cards, I just it... pitch Dak. Yeah, and they're probably guess anyway. Yeah, you can see Operation speeding up now. It's just like a matter of sealing this game. Yeah, two forces. When, we'll you're, do that, it. when you're that far ahead. Um, so, yeah, just force pitching preordained. Just ensure that he doesn't get back in the game. And uh, I know that we're having discussion at some point before about whether you fate seal or whether you brainstorm with Jace, uh, if, you're, if you remember that. And we, <laughs> we had we had resolved, you know, you just brainstorm every turn, right? You, <laughs> like you just do. You just brainstorm every turn. Um, until you need a win con and then you do it. But, you know, the brainstorm's going to be the win con gonna get you there and then we just you know Dak fade mm-hmm. and Dak and Jace good little combo yeah. Dak, Dak and Jace you don't together, get to hide right? your bad cards you get rid of them forever yeah yeah. you either get rid of two cards that you definitely don't want or you um, dig, dig five, five yeah. deep and dig five deep feels good that feels like a card right dig five deep dig five deep yeah. <laughs> well that it, that should be the text on the card yeah you know? and it's like dig through 
dig through recent history mm. and it's like <laughs> dig five deep <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um if you deck first and then a lot of people think that there's some correct order there is no incorrect or correct if you deck first you get to see more cards so if you're looking for something specific you deck first then chase um if you just want ultimate card quality in your hand then you chase first and then you deck and you get to discard the bad cards yeah uh, instead of hiding them on top so obviously if you've got the fetch land um you want to deck first because you you you're gonna get rid of those cards anyway and you still did you get both yeah yep totally agree so you can see here uh the, the mood lighting comes mood down. that's right a little bit of illumination there for for uh jace and dak baden the um the best buds <laughs> Grixis Planeswalkers. Got a bit here. weird there. No, not, not Grixis, sorry. Is it Planeswalkers? So hard cast, hard cast uh, <laughs> Planeswalker Tribal. They see me rolling, they hate it. So hard cast the Soul Ring and the Black Lotus so that I can have hard cast. Uh, I was going to say, hard casting Lotus is. Not too hard. Yeah, for most it's not that not hard. Is it? Not as hard as you think. So he goes DT, and I've got a single card in hand. Remember how we're saying you only up Jace when you've got a counter spell in hand. <laughs> Otherwise, you use Jace to find a counter spell. So I guess you, if I play out Soul Ring and Black Lotus, you can guess what my last card yeah. is. Is hard cast force of will. That's, that's the third or fourth force. Third, I believe. Yeah. So like it's pretty now, nice. And now you untap your Hellbent, but you got three planes of walkie doodles. Please walkie doodles. And you get Love to uh, you get to a hole mini Jace. You get to brainstorm big Jace. Yeah, it's pitch sweet. pitch a pearl to pitch to a pearl full, pearl full of cast <laughs> cast time walk speed operations up because it's just basically like uh, oh sorry flashback time walk oh, off so Jace what, time oh, time, time walk was already down. in the bin. Yeah, yeah. And so flashback time walk, and then just what that says is Jace mind sculptor goes up by four. So like just. Just make sure that I can finish this game. Um, and then I just get to pitch two superfluous cards and keep one good one. There's a wasteland and a ponder. <laughs> Pitching ponder. <laughs> yeah, pitching ponder when you get that much Because I got it. Sensei's Dividing Top. Seems uh, good. Top just seems out. better. With, yeah. uh, and then I find the gush again. The gush is on top. And uh, then I go to my next turn. So I draw that gush and just plus all the Planeswalkers. And I'm like, I just want to get this game. <laughs> That's right. I'm leaving Time Walk on top of his deck. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> Cast Gush. Increase hand size. Um, spell Snare. Because yeah, I was floating Spell Snare yeah. on top with Sensei's Dividing Top. So, uh, and I said, oh, are we okay to finish this game now? I just said, on top of your deck is Time Walk. I will spell snare it. Are we okay to just uh, can, can we can we say this one's done schnitzel? Yeah, <laughs> it's the schnitzel it fried. But he wants uh, he wants to see it. He wants to see the pain in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually said that to him. I'm like, I've got you've got time walk on top, <laughs> and uh... we could have shaft right. Yeah, that's that's all right. Uh, maybe it was this one. Yeah, I think I think it was. I think it's another one. Is that? I mean, the hits keep coming and they don't stop yeah, I coming. Can't, I can't remember what it was. Dig through time. There's almost so much you can do. You can just yeah, dig here and dig yeah. there. Just, just do yeah. a bunch and of digging. any one of these I'd be skipping. So. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's just playing it out because it's like, well, we've got nothing to lose. You could make some kind of operations error and uh, in, in the course of that operations error, a judge... Judge gives you a game loss. That's it. <laughs> yeah, like, For all the judges play, we have at Adelaide. Play, play to the game loss. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not irrelevant. Um, but yeah, I have tribal planeswalkers out. Yeah, so time got... hold there as well. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember what, what happens here. But either way, the um, do you, you the... run a big old bloody? Yeah, but I sell him out, yeah. of course. But this is like just you know. Go to go to the turn. Uh, activate Jace. Like I'm, I'm like, let's just finish this. Uh, so I think the fate sealed. Maybe this is where I, what I was talking about. Um, I think I said there's a there's a two drop. I can't. What's another two drop? Not time walk. Uh, 
Oh, there we go. It's a one drop. That's what it is. I said, I leave a one drop on top. I've got a misstep. Can we just finish this? And he's like, I'll shuffle. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I guess we'll keep going. <laughs> we're having a good laugh whilst we're playing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's interesting just in a few turns, your hands just go on like bang. Yeah. All the way up to seven, right? Yeah, that's it. The gush, the gush was big there. Mm. Um, and so I, I think a Colligan's well. command as well. So like, you know, and because I, I can Colligan's back the Jace Prince Prodigy. Um, but yeah, Jace just flashes back a call, draw three cards. Then I think I like Notion Thief in here. He doesn't something. really have any free wins. Yeah. Either. Yeah, he doesn't have free wins. He's got like Leopold's and that dead, kind of yeah. stuff. Um, and then I was commenting to the people behind. We were talking about my hand to the, the guys who are watching behind. And I'm like, oh, I, just, <laughs> I just want to go to my turn at Ultimate Jace. <laughs> That's what I was telling everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny I'm like, I got library I guess I go to seven cards and <laughs> yeah you get you give your opponent any opportunity to concede I mean you can concede at any time you know, it's not a <laughs> yes. well, I, like I'll make this as painless as possible for you by playing as quickly as I can <laughs> we're, we're not even in, in the range of time like we oh, have okay. like 15 minutes left <laughs> I thought I thought that might have been it that he no. could get a time win or something like that no we, we actually have like 15 minutes left and this is game two but you know like uh, Ed's, Ed's just playing it out like uh, well, it, there's no reason not to well, he's, he's literally no reason not to. Yeah. He's enjoying his vintage. Yeah. Um, he is a pretty good top deck score. Things. Well, this is good. Yeah, Leopold is good. All things considered, no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I literally could just let this resolve because I'm gonna <laughs> just yeah. ultimate Jace, but I'll counter it. <laughs> um, yeah, hard cast. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard cast. This. Don't even draw from library. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a card to draw from library. My library is like something like um, 18 cards or something. I can't remember, but I'm not going to lose to that. But, you know, you can stop dacking at any time. Yeah. <laughs> it's deck not them. a problem. Well, you could dack them. Too. Exactly. Um, so then I just ultimate chase. And, you know, you can exile this. But we get there. So... Um, I guess you get to see the old uh, transformative sideboard. Sideboard out, Blightsteel Colossus, your wincon, turn into tribal planeswalkers. They see me rolling, they hate it. Yeah, I mean, that's how you win, right? You don't really have any other win cons. <laughs> yeah, who needs a win cons? Who needs a win cons? Just Jace. Yeah, just, uh, you know, Blightsteel gets bounced by their Jace, so uh, just play Jace and win by that. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the... It was a very interesting match. Yeah, it was uh, a good match. Watching it back yeah. again, all the decision points at which to... When to counter something and uh, when to stay in library. These are all really, really big questions in Vintage. So I hope you enjoyed a little bit of that action on camera. Thanks for watching, guys. We're Adelaide Eternals. See ya.